Hey everybody, Steve here in the city of Westminster, California at Westminster Memorial Park. And today's visit is a little bit sadder than most of my visits to the cemetery. I'm visiting someone here today that was just tragically, more than tragically, it was just horrendously murdered. He was stabbed more than a hundred times by his killer and his killer only received a sentence of four years. And according to his Wikipedia page, it sounded like he only served a couple of years. The murder victim was gay, and from my experience, just from visiting grave sites, lenient sentences when the victim is gay or a member of the LGBTQ plus community are sadly not unusual at all. His gravesite was covered with debris when I got here, so I walked by it a couple of times. In fact, I parked right here. I was using the GPS, so I thought it was close. I didn't realize that I parked right next to his grave, so I actually walked around the section a little bit looking, and then I came back realizing that I had walked right by it. Let me just pan around so you can see the location where he's buried. This is Beach Boulevard here. And the 405 freeway is just, uh, I think one or two lights in that direction. It's a much larger cemetery than I was expecting. I've never been here before. And there are a number of famous people and notable people laid to rest here. I'm gonna see if I can find some of their graves today as well. And I'm not sure if I'll share them all together or just share them separately. So Danny Locken was an actor and he appeared in Hello Dolly, the movie, as well as the theatrical production, as well as the movie. He also appeared in a number of other TV shows and movies. And on the day that he died, according to his Find a Great Memorial page, he had been in Hollywood filming The Gong Show. Remember The Gong Show? Back in the 1970s? He died on August 21st, 1977, and he was only 34 years old. He lived here in Orange County, and when he wasn't acting or working in Hollywood, he worked for his mom's dance studio down here in Orange County. After appearing on the gong show earlier in the day, he came back to Orange County, and later that night, he went out to a gay bar for a drink. And tragically, later that night, he was murdered in the apartment of Charles Hopkins, who apparently had stabbed him more than a hundred times. Then according to his Wikipedia page, Hopkins called the police and said that Locken had tried to break into his home, and so he stabbed him to death. The police inspectors apparently found evidence that this was a premeditated murder, but for some reason, the evidence wasn't allowed in court, and even though Hopkins was found guilty, he was only given a sentence of four years. And the report said that with good behavior, he would probably be out in two years. So essentially, he received a couple of years for the incredibly vicious and violent murder of Daniel Locken. What I find even sadder is that this is not uncommon. Over the years, I've discovered that the perpetrators of gay murder almost always seem to get very light sentences. How do you only get four years for brutally murdering someone? But if you happen to be gay, sadly, that's just not that uncommon, at least from my experience. You know, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that Danny Locken was stabbed 100 times by this guy. It sounds like he went to a bar, he picked up this guy, or this guy picked him up, went back to his place, something happened, and then he stabbed Danny 100 times, or more than 100 times. That seems so extreme. What would make someone want to stab somebody a hundred times? And then how does a jury find someone who's done that only deserving of four years behind bars? That seems to me as bad as the crime in some ways. So many things in life are just so hard to understand or believe, right? The other thing I've noticed over the years is that whenever I visit LGBTQ plus grave sites, I get very few views, I get, or I get a lot fewer views than normal. Sadly, in 2021, there's still a lot of prejudice and discrimination even beyond the grave. So because gay grave sites are so often overlooked or completely forgotten, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here today. I remember hearing this story quite a few years ago, and I've been wanting to come here for quite a long time. So I'm glad I finally made it today, and I'm glad I was able to find his grave site. So even if I'm the only one watching this video today, I still wanted to come and visit. For me, it's not about subscribers or views or any of that. It's just about remembering people from the past. And more and more, I find myself wanting to visit the grave sites, even though I do visit a lot of famous and notable people. And Danny Locken certainly is famous and notable. 
but he's definitely not an A-list star that everyone comes to visit. So more and more I find myself preferring to visit the grave sites of people like Danny, who sadly are too often forgotten. This week I'd like to thank my newest Patreon supporters, Jay Fleetwood and Raymond Maycool. I'd also like to thank my existing Patreon supporters who both just recently increased their donation to this channel. Thank you, DJ Pritton and Danny Smith. Thank you so much, Raymond, DJ, Jay, and Danny. Your support of this channel definitely helps to make future trips like this possible. I also want to give a big shout out to all of my new subscribers this past week. Your support helps a lot too, so thank you everyone. So until next time, thanks for sharing the memories everybody.